this video I'm going to be going over Lewis structures. So first let's look at the localized electron model. Now this is basically a way to describe covalent bonds and it assumes that a molecule is made up of atoms and they're bound together by shared pairs of electrons which come from the atomic orbitals of the atoms involved. So we assume that the electron pairs are localized, basically they can, they're stuck there, they can't move, on either the atom, which are called the lone pairs, or in the space between atoms, bonding pairs. So these are being shared by the two atoms that they're in between. And so the this model has three parts, and in this video we're only going to be looking at the first part which is Lewis structures. And Lewis structures are a way to describe the arrangement of all the valence electrons in the molecule. So we only write the valence electrons when drawing Lewis diagrams. So this is the Lewis diagram for potassium bromide, which is an ionic bond. So the only valence electron that potassium had, it lost it and gave it to bromine, which now has a full shell of eight valence electrons. So each of these pairs that it has are an example of a lone pair, because they're just on the bromine. They're not being shared with the potassium. So there are two main rules that we have to follow when drawing Lewis diagrams. The first is that hydrogen follows what's called a duet rule. Basically, in a stable molecule, a hydrogen atom has two valence electrons around it. So here's a diagram of H2. So each hydrogen atom has one valence electron. So when they bond, they share their one to form this bonding pair, and so when these are shared, they each have two valence electrons around them. The second rule is that these elements in the second row, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine, always follow the octet rule, which means they always have eight valence electrons around them in a stable molecule. Now, a lot of nonmetals usually follow the octet rule, but these four elements are the only ones that always follow this 100% of the time. So, there are three basic steps to writing Lewis structures. First, you have to add up all the valence electrons from each atom. Next, draw one bonding pair between each atom, each pair of atoms, because each pair of atoms has to be at least bonded to one thing, or else they w wouldn't be bonded in a molecule together. And then last, arrange the uh, remaining electrons into either bonding or lone pairs to satisfy the duet and octet rules. And so usually you want to do the carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine first because you know that they always follow the octet rule. So if we want to draw the Lewis diagram for carbon dioxide, first we sum up the valence electrons. So each carbon has four valence electrons and each oxygen has six. So in total we have 16 valence electrons. So next we draw one bond between each pair of atoms. So we use a line to represent a bonding pair. So each of these lines is really two electrons being shared. So these two bonds together use up four electrons which means we still have 12 electrons left to distribute. So 
We know that carbon and oxygen both always follow the octet rule. So we need to try different arrangements until they have each have eight valence electrons around them. So to do that, we find that we need to use a double bond between carbon and oxygen. And so each oxygen has two lone pairs and two bonding pairs with carbon. So you can see each atom in this molecule has a total of eight electrons around it. So let's look at Cn minus. So first we sum up the valence electrons. Carbon has four and nitrogen has five for a total of nine. But notice how this is a negative ion with minus one. So it has one extra electron for a total of ten. Now, to satisfy the octet rule and only use ten electrons, we find that we have to use a triple bond between carbon and nitrogen. So each atom has three bonding pairs and one lone pair for a total of eight valence electrons. And then to indicate that this is a negative ion, we put brackets around it and a minus. So there are sometimes some exceptions to the octet rule. So boron and beryllium often have fewer than eight valence electrons in their stable compounds. Now since they have a shortage of valence electrons, they are very reactive with molecules that have lone pairs because they want more electrons. And elements that are in the third row or lower can have more than eight valence electrons. And this is possible because they have empty spaces in their d orbitals. So they can fill up those spaces and therefore hold more than eight valence electrons. And so notice how this is only possible in the third row and beyond because the first and second rows don't have any d orbitals. So let's look at ClF3. So each chlorine has seven valence electrons, and each fluorine also has seven valence electrons. So in total, this molecule will have four times seven, 28 valence electrons. So first we draw a bond between each pair of atoms. And then we know that fluorine always follows the octet rule. So we draw lone pairs so that each fluorine has eight valence electrons. And then we just place the remaining valence electrons on the chlorine because we know that chlorine can exceed the octet rule since it's in the third period. So here chlorine has three bonding pairs and two lone pairs for a total of ten valence electrons. Here we have beryllium chloride and we see that beryllium only has two bonding pairs so here it, o it only has four valence electrons so this is, a, is an example of it having fewer than eight. Here we have ICl4 minus so each I will have seven valence electrons and each chlorine will also have seven so in total this has 35 electrons but since it's one minus it will have 36 valence electrons and so we see in the correct diagram iodine exceeds the octet rule it has four bonding pairs and two lone pairs so it it actually has 12 valence electrons around it. And then again, we use the brackets and the minus to indicate that it's a negative ion.
So if we're drawing a Lewis diagram, and we know that one of these atoms can exceed the octet rule, but we don't know which one to put the extra electrons on, we always just assume that we place them on the central atom. So in this example, I3 minus, one of these iodine needs to have extra electrons to exceed the octet rule. So we just place it on the central atom to avoid confusion.